Good morning and welcome to our service of morning prayer together on this Friday, the 27th of January. It is our final Friday morning prayer together of the Epiphany season before Candlemas in the coming days. Let's spend a moment in quiet before we come to God in prayer. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light brings up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory for ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 17. Now, in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. Indeed, there have been factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined, so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instructions when I come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so a short reflection on our reading from 1 Corinthians by Helen Ann Hartley. Upon receiving an invitation to dinner, I am often perplexed at the request to arrive at 6.30 for 7 in the evening. Just what is the right time to arrive within that window? I recall turning up in good time for an engagement, only to find that other attendees were running behind schedule. And as a result, we didn't sit down to eat until after 10 p.m. Clearly, there was an issue in Corinth with people eating at different times, resulting in dishonour to Christ's body. The church in Corinth was socially diverse, and it is perhaps not surprising that the radical collapsing of status was causing all sorts of issues. Paul has to remind the community of why Christ's body matters, and he does this by recalling the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper. This is a rare example of Paul directly quoting Jesus and in so doing, providing us with the earliest accounts of the Eucharist, words we still use to this day. That is a remarkable continuity of tradition, accompanied by another unchanging reality. 
that with a diverse and broad church comes debate and disagreement. That is probably why whenever I read 1 Corinthians, I always find it resonates in a very contemporary way. It remains the case, however, that desperate, despite the fractures at times, Christ's body in its suffering bears witness to the resurrection and therein lies the hope and promise of future restoration and wholeness. We say the Benedictus together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so let us pray. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let us pray to the Lord. That the people of God in all the world may worship in spirit and in truth, let us pray to the Lord. That the church may discover again that unity which is the Father's will, let us pray to the Lord that the nations of the earth may seek after the ways that make for peace, let us pray to the Lord. That the whole creation groaning in travail may be set free to enjoy the glorious liberty of the children of God, let us pray to the Lord. That all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death may rest in peace and rise in glory, let us pray to the Lord. And so we commend the world to which Christ showed the way to the mercy and protection of God. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonders of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's been a joy to pray with you as ever this morning. Don't forget this coming Sunday, the 29th of January, we have a benefit service in the morning at Somerton Church at 10am to celebrate Candlemas together. Or if you are more interested in something a little bit more informal and child friendly, then in the afternoon at 4pm, we have a Christingle service for Candlemas at Hayford Park Chapel. Do look out for notices regarding those services. I will see you again soon. God bless.